Howdy, howdy, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to the video for Zenless Zone Zero. My name is Vinicius SG, and in this Zenless Zone Zero first impressions review video, I'm going to tell you everything that I'd want to know about Zenless Zone Zero before trying it out. Now, let me preface this video by saying I've spent like nine, maybe ten hours on the game so far. Most of that was on stream, and the only money I've spent on this game is for the $10 pre order. The daily rewards package for like $4.99 where you get 90 of their wish currency every day and their battle pass system, but it's another $10. I've spent no extra money on gacha pools, so I'm not exactly free to play at the moment, but I still consider myself pretty free to play. Now, if you hear explosions and whatnot in the background, it's literally the 4th of July as I'm making this, so please ignore them. I hear them. They're super loud. All right, so I'm going to break this video up into three parts, like with all of my first impression review videos, what's good about the game, what sucks about the game, and should you play it based on those things. Now, if you're new here, do me a favor real quick. doesn't cost you a thing. Please sub to the channel with notifications turned on. I'd really appreciate it because it does help this channel to grow. All right, so first things first, what's good about this game? Well, off the bat, the colors, the character designs, the animations that the characters do when they're fighting in the combat system itself, specifically the on-field character switching, these things look amazing. This is a MiHoYo Genshin family game, but it's nothing like I've ever seen before. This game is what I thought and still think Persona 5 should be like. Its UI is very flashy, easy to see, numbers are big and bold and colorful with thick black outlines. It's just really very easy and fun to look at it from a gamer's point of view. At the moment, there are like maybe three or four male characters that you can get from the gacha system and the other like eight or nine are all female. The female character designs are amazing and I'm telling you the truth here, I don't really like playing hentai, and I'm using air quotes, hentai simulators for video games, but I have to admit, they did the damn thing when making these characters look and feel awesome. The thing that really stands out to me is the female character's footwear. Now, I know that is a super weird thing to point out, but follow me down a rabbit hole. I'm not a foot guy. I'm not. But I get sick and tired of every anime gacha game that we've got where they give you these cool, combat-ready, badass female fighter chicks, and they all have these sleek legs down to high heels like they're strippers. I can never for the life of me reconcile that in my head, and it's always weird to me that these devs always put these chicks in high heels like they are fighters wearing high heels. Well, it's not like that in this game. They finally put them in combat boots and sneakers. So that alone has me sold on the character design for the girls. And even still, all the girls look really, really good. My two favorite characters in the game, just hands down, are Ambi and Nicole, both of which you get for free. The combat animations in this game simply put every other gacha game to shame. Your basic attacks actually mean something in this game. It's not just get your ultimate charge up and have all of your characters do an ultimate party to get some ridiculous number. This game isn't a math problem, and I, I hate games. I really do. I really hate games that just turn out to be math problems and you lose all the fun and adventure in the game and look at all the, the magic and all the powers. It's just, I don't like my games being a math problem. I just want to play a fun game. So that's another really good point for me in this game. The counter system is easy. When you see an orange flash from the enemy characters that you're fighting, you press the character switch button and you do a counter. Switching is done by pressing the left and right bumpers on the PlayStation controller and it's an easy way to choose who to switch to. When you finish a fight, you get a really cool ending screen that just really is satisfying because it captures your character in whatever motion they were in for the finishing blow. Another thing that's really good about the game is the leveling system. It's basically the same as the other MiHoYo games. I played Genshin Impact for years and a bit of Honkai Star Rail, and though the names of everything has completely changed, it's still the same concept. Yes, it is a gacha game, and you do wish for characters just like other gacha games, but so far, like I said, I haven't spent any money on extra wishes, and I'm satisfied with what I've got. I've got two s rank characters, which are like the 5 stars, and the uh, a rank characters are like the 4 stars, and they're still pretty fun to use, even though they're like 4-star characters, simply because the combat is so fun. And they pretty much give you two free 5-star characters, or the s rank characters, just for playing the game, so that's a really good thing, too. One final thing that I'm going to list in the good things category is the lack of an open world map. Now, hear me out. Genshin Impact, great game. Polished, fun whenever you're in the mood for Genshin Impact. But let's just say you take an extendo break from Genshin Impact and come back 17 months later and discover that they have three new maps, 
uh, and you have to travel the waypoints, shrines, teleport beacons. I mean, honestly, that's a large reason why I don't pick Genshin Impact back up is because I have to go through this non-skippable story stuff, travel on foot to do more non-skippable stories. You get what I'm getting at here? This game has none of that so far. There is a little city area where there are a few small zones you can walk to for like different shops and stuff, but for the most part, there's no world map. You don't need to like search for material level up items you can just pick an option go to where it's at and farm the mission for whatever you need to level up the character there's no 30 minutes of searching for a flower that spawns up a tree's darkest crevice guarded by whatever i personally really really like that because i tell you man i was trying to level up this one character in genshin impact dude and I had to go on the internet and look for this guide to find where this mushroom spawns and then the mushroom we had like 13 spawn areas for like the day and then you had to wait another day for the spawn and it just took forever to level up the stupid four star character that I needed for my team. I, just, I don't like that. I don't. Okay, so all the good things have been stated, the major good things. Now, what sucks about the game? The first thing for me that sucks, and this is just my own personal foible. I know you're not going to care about this, but for me, this is what I, I care about first and foremost. And that's going to be the lack of male characters. They only have four male characters in the game right now, and half of them are furry creatures. A dog man who arguably has probably the coolest attack animations in the game, if I'm being honest, but he's a dog man. And then they have a bear man. That's a slow, tanky guy who I just really have no desire to get at all. I just can't understand how they can have 197 badass female character designs, but like four male characters and only one of them looks decent. And that's a guy named Anton. He's a four-star character or an uh, a rank character. And I got him and I really enjoy using him. The next thing that sucks, and this is one that hurts the most. This game is not something that you can play for hours and hours and hours on end. And if you do play it for an extended period like that, it just feels like it's easy to get burnt out like really fast. The reason being, the characters don't really have that many things that they can do combat animation wise. Sure, the animations on them look cool when they fight. But basically, if you're doing this right and you're only upgrading a few characters at a time, because by now we all know not to try and level up every character you get because you will run out of resources sooner or later. It gets boring doing and seeing the same thing with your character over and over. There just needs to be more variety in what the characters can do. It's kind of like Final Fantasy VII Remake, not Rebirth, Remake, where Cloud only had like two different combos that he did the whole game. Another thing that really sucks about this game is the Hollow system. This game has three game modes essentially. Story commissions, combat commissions, and exploration commission. The story is cool, they have really funny panels to look at like a comic book. The combat commissions are great because it's just an instance where you go in and start fighting stuff right away. It's the exploration commissions that suck and so far they have given you more of that than anything else. In the exploration commissions you travel the hollow network which is basically a side scrolling thing where you move your character along little TV screens to get to objectives like a little mini game. It's so boring like oh my god I hate doing it. Like I get that this is an RPG game and it does a really good job of being an RPG game. I was really into the story for the first four hours I played the game because it was funny. Like 90% audio voices without needing to read anything. You could just sit back and watch story unfold and play the fighting parts, which is what I think an RPG game should be. But this hollow thing, dude, it's just such a massive mood killer for me. I want to get to the action and get to the fighting, not do a side scrolling mini game. All right, and that's pretty much all the main points of good and bad that I can think of. Sure, there are some smaller things that adds or take away from the game, but nothing that deserves mentioning here. So the verdict, is this game worth it? I'm gonna say sure, but purely as a free to play game. I just don't see enough here to justify dropping money on the game to get like OP with any specific character. Like the fights, the little instance fights, they last about three, maybe four minutes, maybe five minutes so far, and then you're out. You can't continuously run around like an open world setting with your $500 character in an open world. It's essentially for me the same as, and I know this is going to be an extreme like whatever, but essentially it's the same for me like when you're playing Fortnite and you spend $30 to get a glider that you only see that glider for like 12 seconds before you drop into the game. Like that, That's kind of what it feels like. But overall... Yeah, 
this is a fun game. It's a fun side game when you're burnt out on your main game. I can easily see this as something I'd play in bed before going to sleep, but not something I'd take super serious, like I was trying to take Genshin Impact really serious. Tower of Fantasy, I was trying to take it really serious. I wanted my characters to be OP. I enjoyed what the characters looked like. Like, whenever I saw Kazaha for the first time in, in yeah, Genshin Impact, I wanted Kazaha to be OP because I liked the character. And I get to be the character 1,000% of the time. I can just run around and fight with him. But in this game, you just don't get to do that. So I just can't see dropping money like that on this game. All right, and that's going to be it for me. If you did like this video, I'd appreciate your like on it. If this video gets to like 30 likes, that tells me that you guys want to see more of this game posted on the channel, so I should post more. And i am be honest with you. Like, it may sound like I really like crap on the game, like I don't like it, but even if I don't post on this game, I'm still going to play it in the background because I do think it's kind of fun. It's something short that I can play, kind of like Wuthering Waves. I've been playing the crap out of Wuthering Waves. I don't post it because there's just no point. I just really enjoy playing the game. So this is going to be something like that. I'm going to play the game regardless. Do I think you should play the game regardless? I can't tell you what to do, but I think the game is kind of fun, especially if you're like a free to player. Like, I think if I was like... I don't know, I was a weird kid, so if I was like 14 or 15, I didn't have any money to spend on a game, and I wanted to play a game that was fun that I didn't have to spend money on like that for a gacha game, I think this would probably be the best choice, because it's fun, it's quick, and you know, the kids today, like, their attention spans are like gone, so you don't have to sit here grinding for hours and hours, you can get in, do the instance, get your materials, get out, and that's it, that's all you have to do, you don't have to really grind this game like that, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna play the game. If you want to see me post more, just hit the thumbs up button. This video gets 30 likes, like I said. I'll post, you know, whatever. I'll try to do builds and whatnot for the characters that I enjoy playing. All right, so that's gonna be it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace out. Your foundation ain't solid. Preparing takedown. Maximum firepower!